Hello everyone, my name is Quentin and today we're going to learn how to set up and particles to be able to render sprite with Arnold so that you can make snow and dust in the air and whatnot. Let's get started. In a new scene, I'm going to create an end particle network. My emitter is going to be changed a bit from Omni to Volume. Let's select it, change its scale in Z and X, and move it up in the Y direction. If you press play, you get particles falling down. It's amazing. Let's change it even more. I'm going to make sprites. So under end particles, under shading, let's change the render type from point to sprites. And if you re-simulate, you get a nice uh, pair of mm, square falling down. Okay, I'm gonna assign a new material to my end particles. It's gonna be an AI standard surface. I'm gonna name it AI sprites. Remove its specular and jump into my hypershade. Let's see this material. And to start, I'm going to create a first texture using the ramp node. If you want to make some little piece of snow or flowing dust particles, it's really easy with it. All you have to do is change the type from V ramp to circular ramp, switch the color so that you get a white circle on the black background, a little bit of noise, and there's your particle texture. Let's select the out color, put it in the base color, and that's all we're going to do here for now. I'm going back to my theme. If I click on the little checker button, I can see them in the screen. If I go to Arnold, create a light, let's do a sky dome light and under visibility of my sky dome light shape, I'm going to switch camera from 1 to 0 so that I don't see it in my alpha. Okay, first render. Good, I have my texture and in the alpha I don't see the background, I only see my sprites. Cool. Let's make something useful out of this. How can I make it useful? Well, I could uh, vary the um, texture I'm going to set up on my particle. I'd like to vary its orientation so that they are not all facing downward the same way. All the square are uh, parallel to the ground and I'd like to change their size. Let's start with the twist of each sprite. To change the twist of each sprite so that it's a different twist per particle, we're going to have to create an attribute under uh, la 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 under uh, per particle attribute, we're going to want to add a new attribute and for that it's going to be in add dynamic attribute, general. You're going to find this attribute under particle and it's going to be called sprite twist pp. Here it is, ok. Let's click left click on it, creation expression. And what is this expression going to be? It's going to be very simple. It's going to be a simple rend between minus 180 and 180. I'm under creation. So what does that mean? At the creation of the particle, uh, this expression is going to be read. A random number is going to be assigned per particle. And this number is not going to evolve during the simulation. It's only at the creation that this is uh, read. Create. 
let's resim. And it seems to be working well. No, my sprites have all a different rotation. If I check the render with Arnold, it seems like it's not working in the render. Why? Mm, fuck you, that's why. Uh, because there have been no update on the end particle system since at least 10 years and no proper implementation between Arnold and the particle has been made. So, to fix this ourselves, we're going to have to create a new attribute that Arnold can read. Arnold can't read sprite twist pp. What can Arnold read is a, an attribute called rotation. So, Let's create a new dynamic attribute. You're not going to find it under particles because you're not going to make your render with Maya software. You're going to have to create it under new. His name is going to be rotation. It's going to be per particle. And that's all you're going to change here. OK. No, I have rotation here. Let's click creation expression. And what am I going to do? I'm going to say that this new attribute rotation is going to be equal to my sprite twist pp attribute. And particle shape one dot sprite twist pp is equal to rotation that is equal to the rend function. Edit, close. I'm going to go back to the first frame. I'm going to go under the Arnold tab and export this new attribute. Export attribute rotation. Let's sim again. Let's check the render. And it seems to be working. If I check the alpha, we're now getting the same rotation in the render as we are in the viewport. Cool. Next thing, I'd like to change my sprite size. Because right now, they're all exactly the same size. Instinctively, I'd like to go under end particle size and use some of those attributes, like change the radius, or maybe make my particles evolve uh, makes the sprite size evolve in time or whatever. Let's set this up. Say that my particles are not gonna live forever, but they're gonna get, they're gonna die after like three seconds, plus or minus uh, under three seconds. I said so. The lifespan is gonna be three seconds. Life span, span random is going to be one. And I'd like their size to evolve in time using the normalized age so that they start big. And when they die, they r get smaller and smaller until they disappear. OK, that seems well. If I press play. I don't see anything. It's not intuitively using those parameters on my sprites. I'm going to have to do it myself. Let's go under add dynamic attribute. And to change the size of my sprites, I'm going to need to create two attributes. General under particles, those attributes are sprite scale XPP and sprite scale YPP. OK, for the first one. And YPP. OK. Uh, why did I bother setting this up even though it's not working right now? I set up this so that we can get the radius PP attribute. If you don't set the radius scale, the radius pp attribute doesn't exist since they all have the same size. But now that this attribute exists, I'm going to be able to get it and put it on the scale of my sprites. Let's do this. 
equation expression. So, and particle shape one dot sprite scale YPP is going to be equal to my sprite scale XPP. That's going to be equal to my radius PP. Okay, edit. But that's not going to be enough. If I resim, nothing's happening anymore. Why? Because this radius is evolving every frame. So we're going to have to copy this line and put it in runtime before dynamics. So before each frame, it's going to uh, update this value, create. And this way, we're going to be able to have sprites that change time, change shape and size, well, change size mostly, during its life. And this way we can know, use those parameters to set up our sprites. Let's reduce its size a little bit. Let's put some scale randomize. Cool. So we have different scale, different twist. I'd like now to have different texture on it. Let's check a render for good luck. Okay. So how am I going to be able to switch between different texture? Well, I'm going to be able to do this with an AI switch. So let's look at my material. I don't need all this. I have a first texture. Just to make it clearer, I'm going to create a second texture that's going to be a checker. And I don't know, a third te texture that's going to be like a simplex noise so that we can see the difference easily. And I want to be able to switch between one of those three texture per particle. To switch between texture, I'm going to need an AI switch that I don't need to see. Let's connect our first texture to the input one, second to the input uh, zero, to the input one, and to the input two and the odd color to the base color of my material. Once I've done this, I can't see my texture anymore in my viewport. Don't worry, it's still there, but you can't see it anymore because yay, Maya. Okay, what is the switch doing? If you look at your switch, you can see you have an index parameter. When the index is on zero, it's going to read what's on the input zero and show us the first texture. Let's check a render. Input zero, first texture. If my switch index is on one, it's going to read, read the second input. So second input is input one. And now we have the second texture on each particles. But I'm not going to be able nor willing to change the switch manually for each uh, particles. What I'm going to need is an attribute per particle that's going to control this index. Let's go back to our n particles and create one final attribute general. I'm going to use an attribute that's called sprite name pp, but for this you can you could name it the way you want. And what I'm going to say is sprite name pp is going to be equal to a random value between 0 and 3. But since I want only a full value, I don't want any value with 
uh, a comma, no float. I'm going to use the trunk function. So if the ram random uh, function give me 0 0.5 value, for example, it's going to be equal to 0. If it's 2.2 or 2.6, it's going to be equal to 2. Uh, it's, if it's 1.7, it's going to be equal to 1 and so on. Since I have three uh, texture, rand of three is good. It's going to be either 0 or 1 or 2. Edit. I'm going to close that and I'm going to have to export this attribute so that Arnold can read it under my Arnold tab under export attribute. Let's export sprite num pp. Okay. Let's sim again. And let's go back into our hypershade. I'm going to need a node called a user data float to get this attribute. What attribute is asking the a user data float? This attribute is going to be sprite num pp. And this is going to be linked to my index, uh, middle mouse button click, drag it on the name, not the, box, not the box, the name, and here is the connection made. Let's resim for good luck. And let's check the render. Yay! I now have one, I now have my three texture available in the render. Last thing, last thing I'm going to do is make sure that my alpha is correct and that I don't get only uh, squares. For that, I'm going to have to do two things under my end particles. Under Arnold, I have to uncheck opaque. Why fuck you as well, that's why. And uh, in my material, it's going to be, I'm going to need to get the out color of those texture. I'm going to get just the R and I'm going to put it into the opacity. Opacity R, opacity G, and opacity B. Okay, resim for good luck. Arnold render. And it seems to be working. I have a great alpha, no more sprite cards visible. All right, so that's in a really quick and angry way how you can set up sprites so that it works with Arnold. Don't worry, it might be a bit tedious to set up, but since Maya is never putting any updates on its system, it should be still available and the same technique for you in like 10 years or so. Hoping that in 10 years you're not still doing any Maya. All right. That was me. That was Quentin. Have fun and bye bye.